Hello and welcome to this week's edition of It's Your Call. It's grand final week, but this is not the final show of the year. We'll be back next week for the final show of the year when we have a look back at some of the umpiring decisions from the grand final. Great to have your company. You can get involved, as you have done all throughout the year, at AFL is the Twitter address, and uh, It's Your Call, or Your Call is the hashtag. So get involved, pick out some of the decisions from the grand final, send them through, and like we will do today, the majority of the decisions we review are from you. So appreciate your contribution. Keep them coming, as he has done every Every Tuesday afternoon, the umpire's manager joins me, Jeff Geeshan. What an exciting time. Geeshan, welcome. It is a very exciting time, Wayne, and it's good to be here again. There'd be some nervous umpires, uh, as there are uh, 22 players from each team looking forward to arguably their biggest game of their career. Yeah, and we've, we've appointed the umpires this week, so they know already, and uh, now we've just got normal preparation, a couple of nights of training, train at the MCG on Thursday night, have a dinner, then they go along to the motor parade on uh, Friday, and uh, then they're into it. There's nothing normal about grand final week, but I like your try. Yeah. Let's jump straight into it. Don't forget, 8AFL, hashtag your call. Send them through from the grand final, and we'll have a look at them in our final show next Tuesday afternoon. The first one, Hawthorne taking on Adelaide, and uh, you can talk us through this one. Yeah, we see in this uh, decision that the umpire pays a free kick against Ben Rutten for a high contact on Buddy Franklin. What we see is the umpire's view of this, which was caught behind, and that's where he sees Rutten with his arm over Buddy Franklin's shoulder, neck area. But we actually see from front on that it is Franklin who initially engages and he was the first high contact and probably that's the free kick we should have paid. Without wanting to be too critical on the umpire on this occasion, was his positioning correct? Yeah, he was caught out there because the ball had gone out in that direction and as you can see where he is right there, that, uh, that's what he's paid it for. All right, the second decision we'll have a look at is from the second game, advantage that uh, perhaps should have been stopped. Yes, and, you know, we've said all year that it's the player who can determine this, so we've asked the umpires to hold their whistle. And you just saw in that little bit of vision there that a player got contacted, high contact, fit out a quick handball, the whistle's gone now, and the Adelaide player wants to stop, puts his hand up, says, I want to stop. The umpire waved him to play on, thought it would be an advantage. It was one of those ones where because the player initiated it with his hand up, mm. we should have just allowed that to stop and reset. So from a player's point of view, Luke Thompson was the Adelaide player that did initiate to the umpire that he put his hand up. Would he have been better off in hindsight just to stop still and not move? Yeah, I think that's a good call. If he had it just stayed stationary, his opponent would have went and grabbed him. The umpire would have recognised, yes, he clearly doesn't intend to go on and probably would have been better for him to do that. But having said that, our umpires have been instructed if the hand, players put their hand up, they want to stop, we should call it back and stop it. All right, same game. This was a throw, but not from the officiating umpire. This was from the non-officiating umpire in the, at the city in the right of your screen. Yes, and look, we ask our umpires to be really strong on players who don't dispose of the ball correctly particularly when they shovel it out and throw it out. And we see Matt Nichols, who's in control here. He was watching that play. He let it go. What we can see is the ball bobble up and then a slap away. Not a throw, a slap away. So our umpire, about 100 metres away, made that call. Thought he was doing the right thing. Thought our umpire had missed it at the time. But clearly it just should have been play on. So if there's any doubt, and if there's doubt with regards to what they've seen or the distance that they're actually seeing an incident from, sure. then you can't pay that free kick. So am I assuming right that the umpire is actually 100% right that he felt that that was a throw at the time? Yeah, well, he clearly thought that he was 100% right. But when you're 100 metres away mm. and you've got an umpire right there in the position, you've probably got to back your mate who's right there and, and not buy in. So your instruction before we move on to the next decision, just your feedback with that yeah. particular decision. Do you counsel the umpire to say... You know, if you're that far away, you yeah. want to be 110% correct because if you're not, then don't pay the decision. Yeah, it's more our coaches um, would have spoken to Chris Donlan about that and said to him, look, we appreciate your sharp eyes and your willingness to help out a teammate, but as, as you just said, don't buy in unless you're 100% uh, clear about it. Uh, you're a long way away. We prefer that you let the controlling umpire look after that situation. Well, on Friday night, Sydney booked their way into a grand final and we saw one of the greatest goals of the 2012 season, but I'm not sure he took enough bounces. <laughs> yeah, I think oh, we're more than not sure, mate. We're, we're very <laughs> sure. And look, we can see Jetta receive the ball there. He's probably about 40 metres uh, at this stage from the front of the centre square. He takes one bounce, crosses the uh, the centre square, takes another bounce, uh, runs another, you know, considerable distance, takes a third bounce, and then runs to the top of the, uh, the nine metre square or the ten yard line. And look, for all intents and purposes, the umpire in a night doesn't have a tape measure. He makes a guesstimate of how far he's travelled. It happened very quick. In reflection, when we sit down and review that, we go, he's run too far. 
All right, let's just uh, rehash what the rules are. Yeah, the key around this, and you can see the rule up there on the screen, you can, the key is there that he must bounce every 15 metres. I just want to clear up, I've heard a lot of people say 15 steps, but it is 15 metres, and depending on the size of the player, how long their stride is, that varies. So it's not 15 steps, it's 15 metres. Uh, I thought the umpire had a great sense of theatre. That was a fantastic goal. We didn't want to see that one get taken away from Lewis Jetta. Same game. Chelsea Rolfi, uh, Rolfi, congratulations, she becomes the first AFL female umpire to umpire a grand final. Uh, there was a lot of conjecture about yeah. this decision and why a video review wasn't called for this particular decision. Yeah, well, with video reviews, as all your, your viewers would know, um, we've got a call for that before the kick-in or uh, before the ball is bounced if it's a goal. Now, in this bit of footage here, you can see Chelsea right on the line. We can see the ball come in, Tarrant reach for the ball, make contact with the ball. Her positioning, the two boundary umpires are in perfect position. Had we gone to a review, we would have referred it back to the umpires because nothing's conclusive there other than to say, yes, he's made contact there. Um, it would have gone back to the on-field umpires and Chelsea would have given it a goal. But we fully support her. Mm. She's in great position. Um, there's no reason to doubt her. I think we've got a clip of her coming up when she speaks about what happened. We'll have a look at the clip with Chelsea very shortly. But that last bit of vision, I just want to clear something up. We'll get you to clear it up yeah. for the benefit of our audience. Chelsea's positioning there wasn't directly over the top of the goal line, and Correct. the reason for that is to do with the padding on the post. Yes, and with, with a goal-scoring situation, if it's crossing the line, if it's bouncing along uh, the ground and crosses the line, it's where the boundary line is. If it's on the padding, it's the back of the padding. So she has to watch along the back of the padding and make sure that whole of the ball has either crossed or not crossed that back of the padding. So in that case, that's what took over, the, the fact of where the padding was, where the ball was, and had it fully crossed that padding area. Well, let's have a listen to the lady in question, Chelsea Roffey, at today's umpiring press conference for the umpires that will umpire this weekend's grand final. I was satisfied at the time with the decision. Um, you know, I was in line with the, the padding of the post, looking exactly where I needed to to make the call. I had two boundary umpires on their posts looking at it as well, who supported the decision. Uh, no doubt whatsoever in giving the decision, um, even following you know, all the scrutiny that's happened um, and, and speculation around it. I've had no dramas with the decision I gave and um, you know, we've since scrutinised uh, all of the camera angles, not just two of them. Um, and we've found the right camera angles to have a look at the decision and I've got no problem. I'm completely satisfied with it. And, and Wayne, she was so confident mm. and so clear on the day and didn't even think about coming up for a score review. And look, when you look at that vision, you can see it is inconclusive. So we back her 100% regarding that situation. Well, she's a trailblazer because Chelsea Roffey becomes the first female uh, umpire to umpire a grand final. And this is the final selection of umpires. This is the final panel, Wayne. And uh, as you know, these guys have been, and Chelsea have been, scrutinised all year, game by game, round by round, through the finals. And the final uh, umpiring panel for this weekend's grand final are Brett Rosebury. Uh, Brett will be doing his fifth consecutive grand final. Matt Stevick and Simon Meredith, they're both doing their first finals, although Stevick has already umpired 198 games at the level, Meredith 188 games at the level. They've got, both got multiple, multiple finals. And between Rosebury, Meredith and Stevick, I think there's around 650 games and 50-odd finals. Mm. So there's a lot of experience there. And Matty Nichols is sitting on the bench. He's had a very good year as well. In the boundaries, we've got Burrows, Foster, Creasy and Harla. Very experienced, very high-performing crew with Chris Gordon on the bench. And our goal umpires, as you said, uh, Chelsea and Luke Walker, who's an outstanding goal umpire. Congratulations to all of the umpires, and in particular, I think Chelsea Roffey is setting a fantastic example for any young female umpires out there at lower levels. Yes, and look, we're delighted to have Chelsea uh, achieving as high as she is. And if there's any young girls out there that want to take umpiring as a sport, we'd love to see you come through the ranks, particularly at grassroots level, and hopefully one day progress to AFL level. Well, I turned up today thinking this was going to be our last show. I was about to say thanks, but our work is not done because we will come back next week, so I look forward to having your company then, and good luck to you and the umpires for this weekend's footy. Appreciate that, Wayne. And uh, thanks to you for your company, uh, and don't forget, finally, the winner of our two AFL Grand Final Greatness Packages will be notified today, so stay tuned to the lucky winner there. Thanks to all of those people who have entered and participated in the competition throughout the course of the year. As I said before, Geesh and I will come back next Tuesday for our final show. Good luck to the two competing teams, all the supporters. Let's hope it's a grand, fantastic grand final. We'll see you next week.